Good evening for those in Israel, uh, Palestine, and Europe. Good afternoon, East Coast, uh, and uh, good morning, West Coast. Uh, thank you all for taking the time to be with us today with Palestinian Authority officials. Allow me to start with a few words about Sipur Hikaya, the NGO that is hosting this event. My name is Sefi Donner, uh, chair of Sipur Hikaya. Sipur Hikaya was established with the aim to promote reconciliation between Israelis and Palestinians. Peace with the Palestinians, as opposed to peace with Jordan or Egypt, must, in our opinion, must be a warm peace because the populations are so mixed with each other. Reconciliation requires familiarity, and that is what we plan to achieve. We are based on the book Side-by-Side Side, Parallel Histories of Israel-Palestine, written by the Prime Association. Uh, the book, which can be obtained on Amazon, was written by history teachers from both sides, accompanied by historians. It describes the two narratives, the Israeli and the Palestinian, side by side. <clears throat> Our goal is to get as many Israelis as possible to learn about the Palestinian narrative. And in the second stage, we will strive that many Palestinians will become familiar with the Israeli narrative as well. Our NGO includes the Israeli history teachers who wrote the book and the historian who accompanied them Professor Eyal Naveh, Eyal Naveh, our president. In the last year, 10 more volunteers have joined us, but we still need additional volunteers. And among other things, we would be very happy to receive any help in fundraising. So what's going to happen now? Uh, the three members of the PA will immediately begin with a presentation of the Palestinian narrative. Towards the end of the, of the presentation, you are welcome to post questions in the chat. And uh, um, Mrs. Liora Haddar, a friend of mine, an activist in Women Wage Peace, uh, will go over the questions and pass them to our guests. Thank you, Liora, for your assistance. Assuming there will be a lot of questions, and we are fine with it, we will take a five minute break to refresh in about an hour and a quarter around. 9.20 Israel-Palestine time, or 9.25. I would like to ask if the meeting is recorded and you will all receive a link to the recording um, in two or three days, uh, sorry, uh, which you can pass on to acquaintances who could not join today. Okay, time to introduce our guests. Uh, Dr. Samih Al-Abed Al -Abed is a former Minister of Planning and a member of the Palestinian Negotiation Delegation with Israel. Mr. Ashraf El Ajami is a former Minister of Prisoners. Dr. Darwish is a journalist with a PhD in Communications who has managed UN radio stations. All three are, all three are senior members of the Committee for Interaction with Israeli Society a committee established about eight years ago by Abu Mazen with the goal of directly bringing to the Israeli public the positions of the Palestinian Authority at eye level and without the mediation of politicians or journalists. All right, so dear honored guests, the floor is yours. Or should I stop? Yeah, please, the floor okay. is yours. <laughs> yes. Okay, you have to cue me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, um, good evening, everybody, and uh, uh, welcome to this meeting uh, uh, from uh, Ramallah occupied territories, Palestinian occupied territories. But uh, first, uh, allow me, uh, Sefi, to send my best regards to our friends all over the world, uh, starting from Canada. I can see Bassam. Bassam, uh, hi, and uh, uh, from Europe, the United States, and uh, and Belgium, uh, Germany, and so on. So uh, you are most welcome. Uh, my name is Ziad Darwish, and uh, I'm a member of the uh, PCIIS, which stands for the Palestinian Interaction Committee with Israeli Society. 
uh, as Saifi have said, uh, that we've been established eight years ago uh, by His Excellency President uh, Mahmoud Abbas Abu Mazen and uh, the Palestinian leadership. Since that we uh, uh, lack of uh, partners in Israel, so um, the, our leadership decided that we have to start talking to the people of Israel, that they are neighbors and uh, we are in Ramallah that uh, uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes away from Jerusalem. So why not talking to them and uh, start to pave the way toward uh, uh, the peace. So uh, allow me to start with my presentation. Uh, and this is uh, 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 the, uh, what we believe in that we have been living uh, uh, with it. Uh, so many years. Well, my presentation name is Palestine, the pain and the hope. Uh, why pain? Because we are more than seven decades waiting to establish our independent state, but it didn't happen for, for uh, many, many reasons. But we still have the, that one day we will establish our independent state alongside the state of Israel and not in place of. So what we need is just to join hands in order to reach uh, a goal, which is to fulfill uh, the peace. This is my, my, my invention that I invented uh, the, the two flags together, okay? But it have nothing to say politically, okay? Uh, but just imagination that how would we uh, be on the future? Well, I say that uh, our catastrophe, Nakba, started from here, from the first uh, Congress uh, of the Zionists in, in, uh, in, in Austria. So uh, uh, when, when Theodor Herzl and other Jewish leaders decided that the land of Palestine, uh, uh, Eretz Israel, will be the land of the Jewish people, and then uh, he issued uh, an, uh, uh, um, a pamphlet, uh, named it uh, the Judenstadt, uh, means the, the uh, state of the Jewish people. Now, what, do, what would we want? What we want? We want to establish our independent state on 22% only from the land of Palestine, historical Palestine. You can notice the green is, it was in 1946 where Palestinians reside and the, the, the white spots where the Jewish people reside, okay? And when, when I say Palestinians, all of them were Palestinians. I mean, Jews uh, and Christian Arabs and Muslim Arabs were Palestinians as well. And gradually, you can notice that the green were demolishing and the white is taken over. And nowadays, with the settlements, we add more and more, and we are losing more lands. And, and that will jeopardize, in a way, to establish our independent state. So, but there is a myth saying that uh, uh, a, a, a people without land to land, uh, uh, to, to people without land. So uh, let's just uh, uh, explain that. Look, in, in, in 1881, uh, uh, 448,000 Muslims and Christians, Arabs, lived in Palestine, and only 15,000 Jews. In 1914, 683,000 Muslims and Christians, Arabs, and 39,000 Jews. In 1948, 1 1.4 million Muslims and Christian Arabs, and 600,000 Jews. Means that Palestinians reside before in Palestine. They were there, there in Palestine cultivating lands, working in several works, agriculture, uh, fishing, and, and so on. And to prove that, uh, it's we, uh, 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 
Erzberg have been used. You, uh, he wrote an article. Uh, uh, he was a Jewish uh, a journalist. And he said, we abroad are used to believe Eretz Israel means Palestine is now almost totally desolate. A desert that is not sowed, but in truth, that is not the case. Throughout the country, it's difficult to find fields that are not sowed. So Palestinian, the indigenous Palestinians lived here and cultivated their land and they, they lived side by side with Palestinian Jews as well. And now we came to talk about the uh, 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 what, what happened with the uh, 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 with the uh, Balfour uh, promise, and uh, uh, when 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 Sir Balfour delivered to uh, uh, Rothschild, uh, the head of the Jewish uh, uh, community or, or Zionist uh, uh, organization. Uh, uh, a letter saying, uh, promising the land for, for the Jews. And I want to ask here my friend Ashraf to elaborate about uh, uh, that one. Go ahead, Ashraf, please. Uh, good evening for our self here in this region and maybe morning for uh, people uh, abroad in the United States of America and Canada. Uh, I think the, the conflict here in this region was uh, uh, international uh, uh, decision. Uh, it uh, be, uh, became a uh, uh, reality after uh, the uh, British uh, government and the uh, French government together with the uh, Russian uh, Caesar uh, uh, have the uh, agreement to divide the uh, Turkish empire uh, territories. It means to uh, uh, divide the territories which was under the Turkish uh, occupation in my point of view after the uh, first war, even during the first world war, the uh, Sykes Biko uh, agreement was to divide these uh, territories between uh, three countries, uh, uh, Russia, uh, France, and Britain. And our country, Palestine, uh, with the Jordan and the south of uh, Iraq was under the uh, uh, part of the uh, uh, Britain or England uh, uh, auspice or maybe occupation, if you know. Uh, and they decide to put, to divide the Arab countries to uh, uh, small uh, states, which were, was, uh, 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 regions or uh, uh, small states without borders under the uh, Turkish occupation. Now they want to uh, divide this, uh, uh, what they gain from Turkey after the, this war between the two, the three countries and the, our region between two countries, mainly uh, France and uh, Britain. And because of that, the uh, uh, Britain uh, pu put uh, uh, Palestine under the uh, Britain mandate, which was under inter international mandate. Uh, and the uh, uh, England uh, government decided to uh, give this land to the uh, Zionist movement, to the Jewish people to have their independence and have their own uh, state on it. Before that, we were one uh, big uh, people or nation, Arab nation. Jews were part of it. Uh, 
uh, the Palestinian Jews, Iraqi Jews, uh, Yemen Jews, uh, Syrian Jews, Egyptian Jews, they all of them were part of the Arab world, Arab citizens for everything, equal citizens, even with, with uh, 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 maybe access to the governments and part of the uh, elite of many countries. Unfortunately, by this decision of the Britain to give uh, Palestine to uh, be the uh, homeland of uh, Jewish people, the, the conflict uh, started and we suffered, the two of us, Jews and uh, uh, Muslims, uh, Christians, when I uh, say Jews, Muslim and the Christians, I say that the, the people who uh, live here as, as part of this region and part of this uh, nation with um, without any kind of discrimination between people if they are uh, Muslims, uh, Christians, or Jews. Because of this decision and the started uh, immigration to Palestine, the conflict uh, started between uh, Palestinians, Arabs, and uh, Jews. Yes, Turks. Now, uh, I want to just to refer to this. What happened here in this region was uh, made in uh, uh, the colonialist uh, countries. It is not the decision of Jews of this land or uh, Arabs, uh, Muslims, and Christians of this land. Now we cannot return back to the old history. We should uh, go ahead in our. Uh, you want to make me some bread and cheese or something? To have uh, maybe uh, to. Uh, uh, I'm surprised Esther's into this. <laughs> the, yeah. the, the two people here. What? Now. No. No one. Okay. She's listening. I'm sorry, maybe Ellie, uh, can you mute your mic, please? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> okay, the host, can, can you can you mute Ellie, please? I mean, he just... Uh, yes. Eli, mute yes, yes. Your, your phone. Mute. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay, Ashraf, uh, uh, maybe... We should leave the history we are the two people here, uh, live in this country. We accepted the principle to uh, uh, divide this country between the two people. Hold, what? hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We will come to it, Ashraf, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, okay, let's proceed. Now, okay. Please, some images from Palestine before 1948. We are, we are in front of uh, uh, Bab al Amud uh, in, in East Jerusalem, uh, where a, a celebration of, of a feast for, for Muslims that uh, uh, Christians and Jews as well shared that uh, in the gate of uh, Jaffa, Jaffa Gate. And Palestinians cultivate their lands, they work as fish, fishermen as well. And they're uh, sitting around in cafes. And this is Musrara. This is uh, a commercial suburb that uh, Jews and and Muslims and Christians have shops one beside one and cooperate together. And this suburb still existing till today, but without Jews in, in it, only Arabs, uh, Christians, and Muslims in it. Well, uh, this is a, a, a photo for for the uh, 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 the College of, of Teachers in Jaffa, and this is the School of Nursing in Nazareth. Well, we were being developed, man. 
And of course, the railways were very developed in Palestine. And this is the train station in Jerusalem, Al-Quds. And this is the port of Haifa on the Mediterranean Sea. And the first taxi arriving in Nazareth. And here we have the Lud Airport. Lud, it's named after after the the Parisian city nearby, Lud and Ramle. But nowadays it's Ben Gurion, and you know why. And this is Tiberias on the northern Galilee Sea, uh, developed. And we have uh, uh, a press as well. This is Palestine in 1936. And we can see the, uh, the caricature of, uh, of Dizengov. He was the mayor of Tel Aviv, uh, saying shalom to Suleiman Tukan, the mayor of, of Nablus. And, uh, and uh, uh, Mr. Tukan answered him, uh, no shalom, uh, uh, and uh, uh, no shalom and no peace till the withdrawal. The withdrawal means of the uh, 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 British mandate. And this is an uh, oriental music uh, orchestra uh, that played uh, on the radio of, of Al-Quds, the Palestinian radio. And this is what they have in common in Palestine, the, uh, the font that's been written on that, on that uh, monetary uh, the, in English and Hebrew and Arabic as well. Well, since the, the mandate uh, kept on ruling and, and helping uh, uh, to establish the Jewish state uh, on the land of Palestinians, the Palestinian revolutionaries uh, did their best to, to uh, uh, stop that and, and try to liberate the uh, lands that have been uh, uh, taken by, by Jewish organizations. You can, we can see here one of the leaders uh, of Al Abdul Qadir Al Husseini and other leaders. And the British mandate for Palestine from September 29, 1922 to November 29, 1947, that Palestinians suffer a lot. They capture Palestinians, they hanged Palestinians, they prisoned them. And, and of course, Palestina as well suffered from other organizations that the Jewish underground terrorist organization like, like Palmach, like uh, 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 Lefi, uh, uh, like uh, Ergun and others. Well, then the United Nations decided to divide the land, to divide the land between uh, 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 the Palestinians, Arab and, and the Jews and establishing a state uh, for, for, for uh, Jews on 15,000 kilometers, an Arab state on 11,000 kilometers. Uh, I don't know if uh, uh, Dr. Samih wants to elaborate on that. Dr. Samih? I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, yes. First of all, thank you very much for inviting me to join you at this uh, conference uh, here and meeting you know, many people abroad and here. And uh, I, uh, I, I like the whole idea for uh, speaking about the narrative. I think it's good to understand the past in order to look for a better future uh, for both of us. And uh, the presentation of Ziad here is trying to tell us exactly what happened in the past, uh, which is good to know because we have the right to know for both uh, uh, to understand exactly what happened and why we are uh, here right now uh, trying to deal with this uh, conflict. Uh, the partition here with the population between the Palestinians and, and uh, the Arabs and the Jews was more, of course, uh, and I think uh, Ziad showed us uh, as, uh, the spaces uh, according to the population, because the population of the uh, uh, Arab people were more than uh, the uh, Jewish people at that time. 
in 1947. Uh, the next slide, please, uh, Ziad. Yes. Well, this is the partition. I, I want you to talk about the mm. partition resolution. Uh, why, why, why we denied it as Palestinians? Like I said, I mean, it was, it was uh, unfair for both uh, in, in respect to the population uh, of, of uh, both community. I mean, they gave the uh, uh, Jewish community 15,000 square kilometers, while at the same time they gave the Arabs 11,000 kilometers, while the population was uh, almost, uh, I cannot say, maybe it's uh, double the, uh, the other side. So that was the reason they did not uh, uh, consider that, uh, which is, uh, uh, you know, they have, is because they, they thought that this was imposed on them and uh, it was, an, uh, there is no justice in this deal. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Samir. I will proceed. Well, and, and the Nakba, uh, the catastrophe in 1948, uh, caused Palestinian 70 massacres that have been uh, uh, affected by, by the, the Jewish organizations, and uh, we lost 15,000 uh, people. Well, after that, uh, Ben Gurion and the, the uh, Jewish leadership uh, decided to uh, uh, accept the uh, uh, 181 uh, declaration, and they declared the, uh, uh, the the state of of uh, of Israel and and uh, well of course this caused destruction for the life of the Palestinian uh, and and here started the actual Nakba and and while while the people uh, dance in 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 the streets of Tel Aviv and other places uh, of celebrating the establishment, the state of Israel. Uh, it was the birth of the Palestinian refugee problem. More than, more than 700,000 Palestinians were deported by force. Deported, just put them on camions, on trucks, and threw them to the borders of the other countries nearby to Lebanon, Syria, and Jordan. And, and, and of course, some of them fled because they heard about the massacres and they were afraid that it will happen to them. So they evacuated their, their, their uh, towns and villages. So they were deported and fled from 1,300 cities and villages in Palestine. This is some pictures of the runaway. Mm. Well, it's the fled, uh, uh, it's according to the red arrows, shows you to where they fled. Uh, those who lived in, in, in uh, uh, in the cities of, of uh, Haifa, Akka, uh, Acre, uh, uh, and, and uh, Lud, Ramli, they run to the uh, West Bank today, West Bank, okay? And others run to, to Transjordans, and some of them to, to uh, uh, Gaza, and uh, some through the sea toward uh, Beirut, Lebanon, and those who lived in the north, in Akka, Safad, uh, uh, they ran to, to uh, they, they escaped to Lebanon and Syria and Northern uh, 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 Transjordan. And by this, they start their life as refugees. So nowadays the result is 4.7 million refugees that they start living in, in tents. This should be a school for the kids that they run with their parents and families. So the Nakba and the war 
caused a destruction of 531 towns and villages and even replace their names. I have examples over here. The original name in Arabic, for instance, Al-Bassa from left to right, it's in Hebrew, okay? Al-Bassa uh, became Betsit, a Somaria, Shumrat, a Sarafand, Tirofa, Safuria, Tsipori, Bisan, Bechan, and so on. Now the Jewish immigration start coming to their new state, okay? And, and uh, not only that, but, but uh, the Jewish Im immigrants taking over Palestinians' houses and properties. And I wanna show everybody that, and, and I will advise that there is a book uh, 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 written by a historian Israeli. His name is Adam Raz. And he, he's talking about, about the looting <laughs> of Arab property during Israel's war of independence. independence. Adam Raz, Nahb al-Mumtalakat al-Arabiyya khilal harb al-Istiqlal. Well, this book, it's a documentary because he worked several years trying to bring documents, okay, talking about the looting of the properties of the Palestinians that they ran away from their death. Now, uh, the land of Palestine shrinked nowadays. And in 64, Palestinians need a leadership. So they established the, uh, uh, the PLO, Palestinian Liberation Organization, Palestine Liberation Organization, and headed uh, uh, by uh, uh, a leadership of, of the Palestinians. And uh, we can see here Ahmad Shoukhiri, the first one who headed the PLO. And to the left, it's the, uh, the emblem. Yasser Arafat he were uh, 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 appointed as a chairman of the executive committee, committee of the PLO and commander in chief of the Palestine revolution. Now, after the Nakba, the catastrophe, we came to the defeat, the Naksa. You see how many, how, how many, how many problems that Palestinians have suffered all the time since 1948 till nowadays. So in, in, in 1967, there were a war and uh, in Israel, they call it the six day war. Okay. And I want you Ashraf to elaborate about it. Uh, you know that uh, Israel initiated this war uh, and called it uh, a preventive war. Uh, the, the excuse of Israel to occupy all uh, Palestinian territories and uh, Sinai from uh, the uh, 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 Palestine and Egypt and uh, uh, Golan Heights and other places from Jordan uh, that the Arab countries uh, prepare themselves to uh, start on shared war against Israel. But the result of this war that uh, the international community uh, intervened and uh, we uh, had the 242 resolution of the uh, Security Council, which uh, uh, says that there is uh, the, uh, that uh, uh, countries are not uh, are not allowed to uh, uh, control uh, uh, lands by force, and uh, Israel should uh, uh, withdraw from the occupied territories. It means West Bank and Gaza Strip and other Arab uh, territories and have peace between the two sides. And after that, there was a 338 resolution, which uh, repeated the, the, uh, uh, the, the, this uh, uh, demand from this demand from Israel. And the, the also the 242 resolution uh, 
uh, says that uh, they should solve the uh, refugees issue. Yeah. This uh, became the base of the peace process after that. The Palestinian uh, leadership uh, based its discourse after that on this resolution and uh, in 1974 uh, PLO uh, adopted the uh, uh, partial uh, uh, decision uh, which uh, says that the Palestinian people will establish a Palestinian independent authority on any part of the occupied territories that they can release from the Israeli occupation. And later on became the uh, two-state solution when the Palestinian uh, PLO uh, uh, National Council adopted in 1979 the uh, establishment of Palestinian independent state on the occupied territories uh, and Can I stop you, Ashraf, because it will come, I mean, I will come back to in my presentation, okay? okay. <laughs> and you have the right to stop me and, and comment on it any, no, okay. any time. You and, and my, my friend, Dr. Samih al <laughs> Okay. Go ahead and do it. Okay, with your permission, I will keep on. Then, then Israel occupied the West Bank. West Bank, you remember that uh, on the West Bank, uh, 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 many Palestinians who fled in 1948 came to the West Bank and they reside in the West Bank. So, but again, when Israel occupied the West Bank, 300,000 of these Palestinian refugees ran away towards Amman and they became refugees for the second time. This is Alembi Bridge, destroyed by Palestinian refugees running away towards Amman. And the Security Council resolution, Dr. Samih al do you want to comment on that? That, that was initiated after the war uh, about uh, resolution 242 and then after that uh, which will ask for the withdrawal of the Israeli armed forces from the territory of the Biden Jerusalem conflict as well as the termination of all claims to our state uh, brilliancy and uh, respect and our for sovereignty. Uh, and keep the integrity, I um, mean, the territory and in integrity and political independence of every state in the area. And that was the main issue when it started uh, the uh, path uh, toward uh, solving uh, the problem or uh, adopting any resolution in order to end the conflict by dependent on the resolution 242 and then 388, as well as in the past they were talking about the resolution to, uh, for the refugees, which is 9194, uh, uh, to deal with the refugee issue. And it's very clearly at that time that uh, in, uh, the guaranteed freedom uh, of uh, navigation to international and for guaranteeing the territorial in, uh, in variability and political independence of every state in the area through measures including the establishment of uh, demilitarized zones. So that was the main issue for the two for two, which all the Arab countries, I think they accepted uh, that resolution. And we, they started to talk about uh, this resolution. I mean, it, it's in, in our mind till now. The, yeah, I mean, we are still sticking to two for two, three, three, eight, and the 194 resolution for the refugees. Thank you, Dr. Samir. Yeah. And, and we'll keep yeah. on now uh, the Palestinian diplomacy. Uh, since the inception of the PLO, uh, for the first time, the United Nations General Assembly invited Chairman Yasser Arafat on January 1st, 1974, to deliver a speech 
in which Chairman Arafat proposed reconciliation with Israel by, by, by choosing between armed struggle and olive branch. And I quote, uh, today I have come hearing a, a, a bearing and an olive branch and freedom fighters gun. Do not let the olive branch fall from my hand. Okay. And yes, and the the, uh, uh, the Arab summit afterwards on November 26, 1974, uh, 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 adopted a resolution recognizing uh, for the first time the PLO Palestinian Liberation Organization, the sole legitimate uh, representative of the Palestinian people. But we have the first Intifada uprising in December 1987. Ashraf. Yes, uh, it is very important uh, uh, occasion for Palestinians that people in the uh, occupied territories uh, started to uh, have their own uh, slogans and own uh, destiny to uh, uh, not just to struggle against occupation. The struggle against occupation started immediately after nine. Uh, 1976, but it is a kind of popular struggle, a kind of uh, 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 the whole people movement struggle. And this is uh, the important thing here that people in uh, West Bank and Gaza Strip uh, erased the slogan of freedom and independence for this uh, uh, Intifada and they uh, even impose on PLO leadership to follow uh, up this uh, intifada with this slogan and to go to adopt the two-state solution in 1988 and the uh, declaration of independence, which was in uh, Algiers. Uh, this is the uh, most important political development within the Palestinian national movement. The Palestinians, for the first time, adopt the 242 uh, uh, security resolution, and uh, uh, it means they adopt the, the two state solution by declaring uh, an independence on the occupied territories with Bank, it's, it's Jerusalem and Gaza Strip. And after that, the uh, negotiations and talks started between PLO and United States of America. And uh, after- Thank you, Ashraf, thank you, Ashraf. Okay. I, I have to stop you all the time, you know, man. You you are you know flowing <laughs> with, with the information. <laughs> okay, I'll keep on. Thank you, thank you, Ashraf. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and now, okay, this is what Ashraf have been starting to talk about. Uh, the PLO leader Yasser Arafat forwarded an official letter to Prime Minister Rabin. In it, PLO recognizes the state of Israel. Next day, Prime Minister Rabin sent an official letter to Arafat, in it, Israeli recognition of PLO as a legitimate representative of the Palestinians. So here we are, you know, are they, uh, uh, signing the, the, the Oslo agreements, uh, uh, Prime Minister Rabin and uh, Chairman Arafat uh, under the hospice of uh, uh, the American President uh, Clinton. Uh, uh, Dr. Samih Al Abid, uh, uh, you want to uh, uh, comment and elaborate on the Oslo Accords, please. Well, thank you. This is a piece. This is something that why I was uh, engaged in uh, the negotiation, especially in uh, in Oslo two, not in Oslo one, not in this one. I mean, this one was uh, done before in Oslo. Then we started here the negotiation for Oslo two, in which to implement. That the, uh, the the what was agreed upon between the leaders from the, uh, the Palestinians and the Israelis. So uh, we started in 1994 and 95, uh, trying to uh, 
find a way for adopt uh, or implement the declaration of principles that was signed in 1993. Uh, within that, uh, very difficult and it was a turning point. The turning point because after also 1993, they decided to accept Gaza and Jericho first. And then after that, we start to claim more territory within uh, the West Bank and Gaza. Uh, uh, so we had an agreement in 1995 about the redeployment uh, process that will take place by uh, the uh, Israelis to draw from uh, areas in the West Bank and Gaza uh, with the aim to establish the two-state solution. So, with the, I, 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 I say that with some uh, uh, sorrow, of course, uh, because uh, we accepted under pressure that we called certain areas A, B, and C, which uh, as, as a profession, I was not a politician, by the way, in that in the negotiation. I was a technical person trying to give us advice to our uh, politician and advisor. And uh, I felt at that time that uh, this division of A, B, and C uh, is not going to lead us uh, to, yeah, to, to, to the thing that uh, we really uh, would like to see. Uh, and that's exactly what happened. But the whole idea for 1995 uh, agreement that even LAC will be returned to the uh, uh, Palestinian for three redeployment within 18 months, that every six months, the Israelis will be drawn from certain areas till we get to the final status uh, uh, issues that we need to uh, uh, talk about. Unfortunately, this dragged us from 1995 Till almost the year 2000 without accomplishing that. And of course, we went through different stages in Sharm uh, Sheikh meetings, Sharm uh, Sheikh 1, Sharm Sheikh 2, Wai River, etc., etc., till we got to the year 2000, in which uh, the American uh, invited uh, both uh, uh, leaders and the group negotiators and uh, the negotiation uh, uh, partners to meet at the uh, Camp David uh, there during with the invitation from President uh, uh, Bill Clinton. Uh, I was there in Camp David in the negotiation in uh, the year 2000. Uh, that was, to me, it was a turning point because for the first time, they opened the file for all the issues. They talked about the war issue, about Jerusalem, refugees, territory, uh, uh, borders, uh, you name it. But unfortunately, in Camp David, we could not reach any agreement. And uh, of course, as you do, well, they tried to put the blame on the Palestinians first. And then uh, some uh, Americans who were participating in Camp David came out to tell the truth that it was not the fault of the Palestinians alone. It was the fault of the Americans, as well as the fault of the Israelis. Because the Americans were not re really ready to have that meeting in the year 2000. And I'm saying that because uh, Camp David took place in July 2000. And if you all remember that Bill Clinton gave us what we call the Clinton parameter was in December 2000 which means there is a difference of five months between the meetings in Camp David and the other meeting that took place in the White House that President uh, Clinton gave us his uh, parameter. So that means that the Americans were not ready. In my opinion, all the Clinton parameter were put on the table in July as a starting point for the negotiation. Maybe, maybe I'm saying maybe, we could have come more close in order to reach an agreement. Unfortunately, that did not happen. And the year 2000, we started uh, uh, what we call the Intifada, the second Intifada. I have, you know, we were not again, uh, ready for that, or we don't want that, because 
part of the narrative that you Israelis maybe you do sometimes capture our thinking to that. Since 1967, till the year 2000, and we were asking for very simple things that you maybe you didn't uh, uh, capture this from our minds and hearts, that we need our freedom and we need our dignity and we need to have a better future for our children and grandchildren. And that was the reason maybe because people were frustrated because the occupation is controlling our life. I mean, when I say uh, our life, believe me, in everything, in every step, wherever we go from one place to the other, you, uh, we have to get your permission. If we travel abroad, we have to get your permission. Even the water that we're getting is not, uh, uh, there's no justice in that. Electricity, I mean, you name it, all kind of issue of life were under the control of the Israeli military occupation in the West Bank. And Dr. Uh, Samir, can, can, can I stop you here? Yes, you can, of course, anytime. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, we'll be with you again. Now, okay, we, we signed an accord, peace accord, uh, 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 but, but uh, our charter, the Palestinian charter, saying that we have to destroy the state of Israel. So on April 22nd, 1996, a meeting of the Palestinian National Council place in Gaza amended mm. the charter reads, I quote, the Palestinian National Charter is hereby amended by canceling the articles that are contrary to the letters exchanged between the PLO and the government of Israel 9 and 10 September 1993. So we agreed on and we started the peace uh, uh, process as Dr. Samih Al Abid elaborated before. Now, this is a map of the world, uh, just uh, how the world breaks down on the, on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. You can see who's, who's with who. I mean, I mean with uh, the, uh, recognizing Palestine, recognizing Israel, recognizing both of them. But in 2002, at the Arab League summit in Beirut, uh, the King of Saudi, King Abdullah, came with a suggestion and initiative called the Arab Initiative that proposed to Israel to uh, make a peace with, with 57 uh, uh, Arab countries uh, that will normalize the relations with Israel but on conditions of uh, leaving the Israeli withdrawal from the occupied territories, from the Golan Heights, from Gaza Strip, West, West Bank, and East Jerusalem. Unfortunately, till nowadays, the Israeli leadership did not recognize or accept in a way, or even discuss this proposal. And I want to add something that even Iran accepted this initiative. Well, this is more details of the of the Arab peace initiative. And I have to say that the Palestinian leadership headed by His Excellency President Mahmoud Abbas Abu Mazen still still uh, uh, believe in the solution of two-state solution and the Arab initiative uh, that being proposed uh, on that summit. But Gaza suffered, for God's sake, seven wars in less than a decade, in less than a decade, and 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 uh, the Israeli uh, leadership called it operations. But for God's sake, it's a war. It's a war. Look, for instance, and they name it, you know, different names. Protective edge, for instance, or or uh, what, what else? Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, for instance, one of these operations or wars 
uh, attacking Gaza from July 8th till 26th of August 2014 resulted in death of 2,174 Palestinians. 10,870 were injured. 12,000 totally demolished housing units in addition to partially demolished houses. Ashraf, since that you are a Gazan from Gaza, you want to elaborate totally, please. Do you want me to speak? Yes. Uh, before uh, speaking about uh, the situation in Gaza Strip, uh, I just want to return back a little bit about uh, Oslo Agreement. Okay. Uh, Oslo Agreement says that in May 1999, we should reach a permanent agreement. It mean uh, it means we should reach two-state solution. Unfortunately, in May 1999, even we didn't start uh, talks about the permanent agreement, as uh, uh, Samih and uh, uh, Ziad said, the, uh, the first talks about permanent agreement was in Camp David summit. Uh, about Gaza Strip, Gaza Strip under uh, a huge siege, people uh, suffer from lack of electricity, lack of water for drinking, uh, lack even for, uh, for, for water, uh, lack of water for uh, agriculture, um, lack of medical treatment, medicines, uh, uh, the uh, unemployment in Gaza Strip, uh, uh, more than 50, now 54% of people, and uh, uh, the poverty, 70% of people under the uh, line of poverty, the international line of poverty. So this is unhuman conditions people live uh, under in Gaza Strip. The situation uh, uh, makes Gaza Strip as a bomb that may explode any moment. And because of that, this kind of violence and uh, the clashes between Israel and Gaza Strip, I think uh, Gaza uh, people, we are speaking about uh, two millions of people in Gaza Strip live in a situation that push them to uh, to explore. To exp I, I don't think that any kind of normal people can live under these unhuman conditions and stay calm, just wait for their dignity. Thank you. Thank you, Ashraf. Thank you. Okay. So we have countless summits and, and, and meetings and no results. Dr. Samih Al Abid. Yes. Yep. Unfortunately, this is the way it is. I think, first of all, it's important to uh, know the history. Uh, for both of us. Uh, we know that the uh, Jewish people also, they suffered a lot and, uh, a long time ago in uh, Europe, uh, other places as well. And uh, uh, to me, it's important for both of us to talk about the narratives. But that does not mean that we will be captured by the narratives in the past. We have to look for the future. And there are many lessons that we learn from each other during all those areas. Uh, unfortunately, you are using the asymmetry between you and us militarily and other aspects that you are controlling everything here. And the right wing, they feel that the status quo is very good for them. They are relaxed. Uh, there is no need to give anything. And at the same time, uh, many in Israel, 
I think more than 50% or 60% of the Israeli population still believe in the two-state solution. And the same with the uh, Palestinians as well. Because we feel that this is the only way in order to achieve real peace. The status quo will not last forever. And the status quo could create many problems in the future. And we have not, not too many choices, by the way. One is to have one state, since you all getting good, you know, uh, everything is mixed. And the action from the Israeli government till now make it very difficult for the two-state solution to be established. Or we will have a two-state solution. Or we will stay in conflict forever, or till something is happening there. I think the international community, as well as the Arabs, and you can know now that there is, uh, your, uh, the Israel are happy for the normalization that took place with the, some a few Arab countries. Uh, to us, the Arab Peace Initiative is the only uh, best way in order really to achieve this with all, not four Arab countries, but with all Arab and Islamic countries uh, uh, together. This is our option. The normalization, yes, maybe it, uh, it happens between, uh, it was, uh, I think of it as a major issue in order to get Mr. Trump to be elected and for Mr. Netanyahu to be elected because it was a, a pressure uh, from uh, the Americans in order to achieve something before the election. Why it is uh, for us were a little bit upset about it. Because if you look, you know, during those days, uh, we, there is a peace that took place between Jordan and, and uh, Egypt a long time ago. But unfortunately, till now, there is no peace between the people of Israel and the people of Jordan. And there is not really peace between the people of Israel and the people of Egypt as well. So peace between neighbors cannot be a substitute for peace among the people themselves because the interaction is within the people, the relationship between the people, relationship between the NGOs, civil societies, and all that, unfortunately, is missing. And the difference between the normalization that took place between Egypt, Jordan, and, and their peace agreement with Israel, it was explicitly preserved Palestinian rights and territorial claims. While the normalization deals with the uh, UAE, Bahrain, and Morocco do not condition the agreement on anything substantive act or reversal of actions by Israel. Except what they talk about the uh, UAE was the uh, uh, suspension of the annexation. So the annexation, and, and I don't want to go through all this in, in details, because I can, I can tell you that, for example, the signing agreement with the, with the Sudanese, for example, uh, it's not a normalization deal at all. It is an, I can give you exactly, an aspirational document that talks about in, interfaith dialogue and in, intercultural understanding, okay? But the Sudanese, they got something out of that. They were removed from to be a terrorist uh, country, and uh, they have to pay some money here and there, and, and the Americans will uh, support their economy as well. What we are looking for, we are looking for a, an, a good relationship with the Arab countries, with Israel, but without solving the Palestinian problem, it will remain a big problem that cannot be solved. How do you make peace, for example, with UAE, which is far away from here, and we are in front of you, and we are not taking peace with us? It's Dr. Sabir, Dr. Sabir, we, uh, we will come to the that. core. We will come we, to the core issues with your permission, okay? And then you can elaborate more on these core issues uh, 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 that that uh, uh, we are taking. Okay. Mission, okay. Thank you. Now, situation nowadays, resistance of the Persian people to, to, to the occupation, all means, I think, 
that that Palestinians have the right to oppose uh, the the occupier. Okay, uh, but we are trying some organizations, some friends, to uh, uh, try to oppose uh, uh, the occupation in in a peaceful ways and not not uh, armed ways. The Israeli military forces shooting Palestinians, death of Palestinians, the moons in every house over here, demolishing houses, and expansion of settlements on expenses of Palestinian land. Brutality of the uh, uh, the Israeli police against kids, even and the settlers, and the settlers, and the settlers that they are so free and they are guarded, as you can see in the picture, by the Israeli uh, military uh, forces, uh, uh, and they are. Uh, 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 I mean, uh, sometimes shooting even, not throwing stones, as we can see over here, and, and even cutting uh, 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 olive trees, that uh, the olive tree is, is one of the, of the native uh, uh, plant uh, and, uh, that, that Palestinians live uh, in. And you can see uh, even these settlers are guarded by the, the, the military forces. And the core issues, the settlements. Dr. Samih, you may elaborate on settlements, no. please. No. Yeah, but I, I, I read the, a statement from somebody who was saying about the reconciliation between the Palestinians and the Israelis. I understand this, and um, uh, I want to, to be assured that this is going on. And uh, civil societies are talking to each other even with different parties. We are here uh, for this session is to know more about the narrative and how the Israelis are thinking and how the Palestinians are thinking toward what happened to them till now. So uh, the settlement issue is a major obstacle in achieving a two-state solution. And the problem for that, the majority of the settlement building took place after the signing of the Oslo Agreement. In 1994, which tells us that the Israelis, not all the Israelis, but the Israeli government or the right wing, they have no interest whatsoever in establishing the two state solution. Because by continuing this and making it difficult for the establishment of a two state solution, whether you create an apartheid system or we have to go for a one state solution, that's the only choices that left for us, even though I was with my colleagues here, you know, participating in the negotiation, I still believe that there is a chance for the two-state solution. Uh, uh, we presented different ideas how to solve this, how to make the swab and the territorial issue, and that can accommodate 80% of the settlers and the 20% left can be accommodated within the 80% or for, the, for them to stay within the Israeli sovereignty or whatever. There are many solutions. There are different think tanks, even in the States or in Israel or in, in Palestine. They are talking to each other and having more creative ideas about how to solve this problem and to create the conciliation between the Jewish people and the Palestinian people as well. Unfortunately, the leadership uh, in Israel, it, it showed no interest till now. Uh, where that will lead us, we don't know. Where that will lead you also, we don't know. You saw some of those pictures. I think the Israelis, they have uh, uh, but it's, okay, I will, I will answer this for the Palestinian refugee issue. 
I was participating also in what we, uh, you all heard about the Geneva Accord. I think my colleague uh, Ashraf al Azam was there, and uh, Ziad was not far away from that, right, uh, Ziad? Uh, we, had, we had it uh, a long time ago, and we got the, uh, the majority of the Palestinians and the Israelis, they accepted uh, the idea in which we have elaborated about all the issues, including the refugee issue as well. Uh, unfortunately, the narratives for the refugee issue is hurting you as much as it's hurting us. You think that the refugee issue will uh, demolish the coexistence? We'll come to it. We'll come to it, Dr. Samih. We'll come to it. You talk about the settlement I, I, right now and I, leave the uh, next I, for, for, for your colleague Ashraf. <laughs> because I, I, I saw there is. Uh, uh, and a statement, uh, 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 okay, I understand that the Canadian, not only the Canadian, they are for Biden, that means for the two-state solution. Uh, of course, uh, even uh, uh, Trump said that, but in a different way, you know, he meant a different, uh, different two-state solution. I don't know what he was talking about, uh, but... Yes, the international Dr. Samir, I'm sorry. I, 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 may, may I suggest that you answer? No, I'm sorry. That I suggest that you answer any comments or any uh, and uh, question later on. But we are we are about to finish the presentation. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, yeah, uh, well next next. Yes. Okay. okay. Oh, just keep it. Keep it in mind. Keep it in mind. Or write it down. Whatever. Yeah. Next uh, core issue is refugees. Ashraf. Yeah. The uh, main uh, uh, core issue of Palestinians is refugees issue because more than six millions of Palestinians are uh, refugees and outside country. So, of, of course, without solving this issue, there is no solution, just solution for Palestinian issue. Because of that, I think the uh, formula to have just solution is to give Palestinians the right of uh, self-determination and have an independent state on the 1967 borders which its capital is East Jerusalem, and uh, have a, a symbolic solution for refugees, uh, which means, uh, as my friend uh, Samir said, uh, it is uh, written in uh, uh, Geneva Accord, uh, speaks about uh, numbers of refugees that, can Israel, that Israel can live with. It means that it uh, may not change the status of uh, demograph demographic uh, uh, majority. Ashraf, you want to elaborate on Clinton parameters uh, that, that related to the refugees solution? Yes, uh, uh, Geneva called based on uh, Clinton parameters. Uh, uh, Clinton parameters uh, uh, said uh, that uh, the uh, borders between the two states are uh, 1967 borders with land swap. Uh, the Palestinians accepted the principle, which uh, 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 make it easy, uh, which makes it easy for any Israeli government to uh, decide to go ahead to uh, uh, solution of this uh, issue, because we understand that uh, any Israeli government cannot evacuate uh, mil uh, tens uh, or hundreds of thousands of refugees from the occupied territories. Because of that, we accepted that uh, the three uh, uh, biggest uh, blocks of settlements will be uh, annexed to Israel. We spoke about Ma'ale uh, Adumim, Gevad Zayev, and Gush Etzion. And instead of that, Palestine will get the same uh, quantity and the quality of land. Uh, 
one and front one, one to one. So this uh, solution may uh, lead uh, uh, the Israeli government of Israeli and Israeli leader to uh, uh, deal with this uh, sett uh, settlement issue to evacuate a small number of settlers. Unfortunately, the Israeli government from that time, from uh, uh, the Camp David summit and the intervention of the American administration until this moment, uh, insist to uh, uh, build everything uh, in everywhere in uh, the uh, uh, occupied territories and put as much as they can Israel settlers in the West Bank, which uh, tries to prevent uh, uh, a situation to have a viable and uh, uh, Palestinian state. It means that if there is no contiguity of the Palestinian uh, uh, state lands, there is no hope to have an independent Palestinian state. Even a Trump uh, administration plan uh, uh, went uh, uh, aside with the uh, Israeli um, uh, position. And I mean the uh, Israeli government position, Benjamin Netanyahu and his staff, uh, to adopt this uh, uh, vision of having some kind of autonomy for Palestinians, not uh, a full independent and a viable state for Palestinians, which is the Palestinian leadership refused totally and the whole Palestinian people refused also. Thank you, we Ashraf. Thank you, Ashraf. Thank you, Ashraf. I think, Ashraf, I, I, if, if I may compare you with the late Prime Minister of Israel, Sharon, when, when Sharon asked question, okay, he never answered that question. He always proceed for what he want to say. That's it for the media. Now, with your permission, I will, I will, I will concentrate a little bit on, on the refugee issue. Uh, according to the uh, 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 Clinton parameter, uh, they suggested that uh, 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 three or four options for, for the uh, refugees. First option that refugees will be compensated and will be immigrate to any will be dealt with or agreed with like Canada or, or no, no, Norway or Sweden or whatever, okay? And they will be convert to be Swedish or Canadian or whatever. Uh, next option is to compensate these those Palestinians that they will uh, uh, stay where they are and 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 will be uh, 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 citizens of Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, whatever, and the Arab countries. Uh, a third option to uh, compensate Palestinians and return back to live in the state of Palestine. Fourth option to compensate them and return back to live in Israel, conditionally, that the leadership of Israel will determine the number of these refugees that can enter and settle in the state of Israel. And we are not talking about millions. And now they are frightening the people. No, the, the right of return is that all these millions will come to Israel and settle in Israel. That's not true. I will proceed. Now, the borders. Dr. Uh, Samih al Abid, border. This is your uh, uh, specialist. We are not here to is the issue. We know the core issues about the borders. We have been talking about this since Camp David till now. And uh, civil society were involved in this as well. Uh, negotiation uh, took place after uh, Camp David with Taba, with Annapolis, and, and many suggestions were. Uh, at least throw, uh, thrown in in order to find a solution for that. Uh, there is a solution in the mind of the people, in the civil society, in the think tanks. And uh, you can, some of you are in Canada, in the United States, 
there are think tanks that they are talking about this issue uh, consistent and they are proposing a different scenarios for finding a solution uh, uh, for all the issues, not only the border. Um, I, I participated in uh, personally, just uh, allow me, Ziad, because I was uh, I am a fellowship at the Baker Institute at uh, yes. Rice University, and we did many many uh, uh, issues that uh, you know many uh, papers related to that. We are also participating with the USAID Institute for uh, dealing with many issues, including Jerusalem and the two-state solution. We are dealing with the Washington Institute, the Brookings Institute in, in the United States, and many issues with the INSS in Israel, as well as ECF in Israel. I mean, there is a reconciliation issue taking place between the civil society, between the Palestinians, Israelis, including American NGOs, that we are talking very seriously about finding a solution. Unfortunately, the last four years were not uh, given any uh, support for the establishing of the two-state solution. When we talk about the borders here, we know where the border will start. It's in the border of 4th of June, 1967. If there will be a, a, a swap area, we consider that there are many alternatives for this. And like Ashraf said, and I said that before, we can accommodate within that not only the three uh, major blocks here, but uh, we came to a solution with uh, some Israelis that we can accommodate about 80% of the settlers to be part of the swap land, but to give a full contiguous territory for the Palestinian state. And uh, without harming anything, and uh, we will keep a good neighboring between us and you, and we can be an excellent bridge to the east and, and uh, uh, as well. Uh, that will be a major breakthrough in the region because even the normalization, if it is not within the adjacent to us and you, it doesn't mean anything to us. Maybe some economic issues in the Gulf states, but if you talk about Syria or Iraq or Lebanon, in addition to Jordan and uh, Egypt, it doesn't mean anything. Unless those countries come with a settlement with the Israelis, which will happen if you solve the problem with us, a Palestinian, then we can talk about a regional peace, a concrete regional peace in the, in, in the area. Uh, there are many yeah, the studies that is taking place. Unfortunately, the right wing in Israel are not interested in that. They are taking their uh, um, power, maybe, maybe the best uh, economy, the best economy, military, uh, you know, overwhelming on the region here. So, why should they give uh, the status quo? They think that it will be a best option for them and to continue doing whatever they're doing. They are building settlements and the only thing they can receive is some uh, uh, national, international community will say, oh no, for that, this will damage the two state solution, but nobody is taking any action uh, as a uh, uh, disincentive toward Israel. We want the region to be involved with us in order to have and to give some incentives to us and the Israelis. And we would like the same international community also to give incentives to us and the Israelis. But if somebody that is not working toward the solution for that, then the this incentive should be applied as well in both of us. Then that's that's the whole issue. It's not a matter what we can do at the border. There is a solution for this, and many different scenarios for that. That would be not as the Israelis want it to be, or means of what the Palestinians want it to be, but at least we can accommodate ourselves toward that, in order to reach a peace. If you talk about the economic issues, of course we have, I mean, you are you are benefiting from the economy from the West Bank and Gaza. No doubt about this. I mean, it, it, this is well known. 
and still we can work together and we can have a good neighboring good relationship in terms of the economy even education and uh, culture many issues that can be linked to each other as a two neighboring countries living side by side with each other without the control of one over the other without military uh, presence uh, there so uh, can, can we finish with this positive uh, vision <laughs> okay okay i want to answer Thank you. because then we will proceed you you will have question from our friends <laughs> okay next uh, uh, and the last core issue is jerusalem al quds Ashraf, okay. please shortly please shortly yes uh, also in, in okay I will talk about okay 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 Go ahead, go ahead, Samir. I'm talking about Jerusalem, you know, and this is, <laughs> uh, you know what does it mean, Al-Quds, to us? When we talk about Jerusalem, uh, after all, it's a city, okay? Like any city in the world. But it is a unique city, of course. It's different than any others because it has uh, faith for, the, uh, for Muslims, Christians, and Jews, of course, it is unique than any other city in the world. But at the same time, it's a city where people live there, and, uh, 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 you know, and activity, economic activity, tourism, uh, uh, industry, uh, all together uh, create a city. It's a functional issue. To me, it's not a border issue for uh, Jerusalem. The occupied city of Al-Quds or Jerusalem was the six square kilometers boundary of the city which was occupied in 1967. It's not Kufr Aqab, it's not Ram, it's not Shafaqam, it's not others. But you came and you annexed, as usual, the whole area of east of Jerusalem and you call it Jerusalem. At the same time, you came after that and you built the wall within that bo uh, boundary of the city. So I have a big question to Mr. Trump. If he knows exactly where is the boundary of the city of Jerusalem that he gave to the Israelis. I, I have my doubts if he knows what he's talking about. And some of the Israelis don't understand this because after all, the whole core issue is the old city which is important for both of us in Camp David. It was discussed in Taba, it was discussed in Annapolis as well. And there is a functional attitude towards a city, whether it's an open city or a closed city. But we accept and we would love very much to have the two uh, open city between the two, the east and the west, in order to make it a benefit for both of us including the tourism, economy, and all that. And that city will stay alive 365 days a year because of the three interesting groups that would like to visit the city and to enjoy the city there. But the action are taken by the Israeli government two of the Jerusalemites is very dangerous. And it, it, the way they treat the people there is unacceptable at all. We have a solution for the issue of Jerusalem. Uh, Palestinians and Israelis, they get together and they talk about it. Uh, you can, if you're interested, you can see many uh, scenarios also for the two state, for the two cities, the open city uh, between the two, in details, architecture details for the crossing points between the two sides. Uh, it's very, very important for people to see and to look at this in an open eyes. And uh, I know I can, uh, we, we can answer all the questions that is in, I, I can see it in the, uh, uh, in the screen here. Uh, but we don't want to, uh, uh, you know, put, uh, to dif yani put the two, two, too many issues together. We want to talk about the issue of Jerusalem, there is a solution for this between Palestinians and Israelis as well. We know where is the boundary of the city of Jerusalem, our Al-Quds, we know it. Then we'll, and you know it. And you politicians know it. But when they expand the area, and now they are trying to build 
uh, a new community in, uh, in Columbia Airport, which is the only airport uh, uh, exists in the West Bank uh, by building housing projects over there. This is damaging. And they use it for uh, election issues, as well as E1. Of course, many of you, they heard about E1. And they went built another community over there, which is damaging the city of Jerusalem as a well. whole. By the way, the image of the city of Jerusalem in order to keep it unique, by not building high-rise buildings over there because it's damaging for the future. The infrastructure in that city cannot, uh, uh, you know, accommodate all that development. There are many <clears throat> planning issues for the city is damaging. It's not a matter of race between elections, who's going to gain more votes by building more settlements and to ruin the two-state solution. This is what can I say in Jerusalem, maybe Ashraf can add something to that. Ashraf, you want to add something? Yes, a little bit, uh, because uh, in all negotiations, the Palestinian side uh, accept the principle to, to divide the Jerusalem into uh, neighborhoods that uh, where there, um, there is a majority, if there is Jews, it will be under the sovereignty of Israel. If it were the majority of uh, uh, Palestinians that will be under sovereignty of uh, Palestine. And the old city will be open without any kind of fence. And uh, the, uh, the old city also, Israel will uh, be uh, sovereign on uh, the uh, uh, Jewish uh, uh, neighbor uh, quartet and, and, and the uh, half of the um, Armeni uh, one, and because of that, uh, the, also the uh, Jewish state, Israel, will have the uh, 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 Western Wall uh, uh, for under its uh, sovereignty. So, so will be a kind of division, and the President Mahmoud Abbas also suggests to have two municipalities. One in the east, the party of the uh, Jerusalem, and the uh, other Jewish one in the west uh, uh, part of uh, uh, Jerusalem. And there is a joint uh, council between the two uh, uh, municipalities. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, we cannot imagine a kind of solution for uh, Jerusalem without keeping it open for all believers from uh, if they are Jews, Christians, or Muslims. So there are many creative solutions in Jerusalem, but not uh, as a, a precondition of uh, Benjamin Netanyahu to keep it uh, united under the sovereignty of Israel, because Benjamin Netanyahu refuses totally to negotiate about uh, Jerusalem. It means that there is no solution, that there is no end for this conflict. This is the, the, the uh, main idea of uh, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu and the rightist wing in Israel. Thank you, Ashraf. And uh, right now, thank you for your attention. And I think uh, uh, many, many, many friends left uh, for their reason. So, uh, uh, Sefi, yeah. uh, we, fin we finished the presentation and we are open to receive questions. Uh, yeah, to, but to my, uh, to, thank, to my you, thank you so myself. much. Thank, thank you. you so much, Ziad. I think it's time for a five minutes break. It was the, what you heard now is of course the Palestinian narrative, as you can imagine, it's somehow uh, different than the Israeli narrative. But anyhow, it was very interesting also in my eyes. Anyhow, let's have a five minutes break and in five minutes uh, you will start uh, uh, answering uh, questions uh, that appeared already on the chat. Thank you for the time, all of you. Okay, hi. <laughs> so we have, a, we have a lot of questions here, I see. Um, and so, uh, Ziad, are you here with us? Is 
Ziad here? Ziad? I'll be in second. Oh, okay. I'll make sure you're here. Okay. Um, okay, so going back um, to the first question, um, Barbara had a question. We are hoping that you will move on to what can we do differently now? For example, settlements, economic cooperation, security measures for both, I guess for both sides, healthcare, and building positive relationships, including educating our children for peace. Well, may I start? Maybe, maybe uh, I can say that, uh, as as my 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 friend uh, uh, Dr. Samih said, that uh, in his uh, positive vision that he finished talking, uh, I think Palestinians are fed up, and they want to finish uh, uh, the the occupation. First of all, we have to finish occupation, and afterwards, I'm pretty sure that relationship and cooperation will take place with Israelis in all aspects of life. Okay. Any of my colleagues can, can, can add if they want. So in, in, in answering the questions here, you have three different questions. One about the economic uh, uh, development between us and security and healthcare. I will start with healthcare. We are very, very disappointed from the state of Israel because we are under occupation here. They got all the vaccine for Corona and they know this is a threat for the life of people and we are not getting except very few from them here. And this is really something that you Israelis should be ashamed of by not supporting and helping people in terms of health, and especially in the corona issue, which is made all the, an issue all over the world. And why not us giving a, a chance for a, a, a vaccine? Uh, that's a major problem for us. If you talk about security, I think everybody bridging the security coordination between the Palestinian and the Israelis even the Americans and even your leadership, uh, the Israeli leadership and everybody there. And uh, unfortunately, there's no security for us. The issue of security for us is neglected. I never hear an Israeli talking about our security. Who's going to take care of our security? You see, we accept the demilitarized state, but what about our security? Who's going to support us? Who's going to prevent anybody from attacking us? Who's going to prevent people, your soldiers, from going to every town and village every single night? The security issue, the coordination between us and you, we're doing it, I think, in a very faithful and goodwill, and everybody is blazing that. But even though, unfortunately, you are not respecting our security at all, and that's our concern. And then um, economic issues, I, you all know that at least we have close to 200,000 people, they work in Israel. Our economy is under the control of the, uh, uh, of the Israeli uh, government and the civil administration here. There is a trade between us and you. You are giving us more than you taking from us in, in order to support our economy here. There is a, a, a symmetry between our economy and our economy. And the unemployment uh, uh, range within the West Bank, about 24% or 25% in Gaza, more than 30 some percent or 40%. So you see, if we have a relation between the two state solution, of course, the economic trade will be greater than now, and it will be benefit for both. And you, if you have a poor neighbors, then you're not safe. We have to have some sort of independent in our economy. I mean, not independent in our own, but at least with the relationship between us and you. We need to uh, practice the Paris Protocol in a different way. It has been since 1995, the Paris Protocol till now. 
things are changed in the whole world. It changed for us, it changed for you. So there are elements in there that need to be changed in order to improve our economy. Uh, we were, uh, of course, would like very much to have a good economic relationship with you. That's nothing. We would love very much to have a full security arrangement between us and you in a very good will for both and not only for one side. So we will have our security. And like I said, the healthcare, unfortunately, we are very, very disappointed with what happened within this pandemic. It hurts you as well, not only us. But the way that you dealt with it, I think if you think about your values, this is a shame. This is very shameful to the way they dealt with us in the uh, uh, corona issue. Okay. Um... Thank you, Samich. We'll move on so we have time for more questions. Um, there's a question that was asked in private. Um, what is the status of those residing in refugee camps within the territories? Will they have voting rights in the upcoming elections? Uh, because in the previous elections, they didn't. And why aren't they absorbed in the cities and towns within the Palestinian Authority? Asha? Uh, say something? I think I think uh, the, there is uh, this is something wrong here. All Palestinians in villages, cities, and uh, refugees camps uh, participate in, in elections. So it is uh, an issue of the whole uh, Palestinian uh, people who live in the occupied territories in West Bank, East Jerusalem, and Gaza Strip. There's uh, no, no, nothing to uh, prevent them participate in elections. They, they participate in a massive way. And when, when we speak about refugees, for example, Gaza Strip, uh, two thirds of Gaza Strip are refugees and they participate uh, in more than other uh, places in uh, West Bank and Gaza. And in, in, uh, in okay. okay, so thank you. I don't know if that was the question. Another question was Do school books in the Palestinian Authority show Israel on the map? Well, um, I will answer that with your permission. Um, I think all, all, all the times, all the times they are, we are accused that we have. Uh, 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 a kind of curriculum or books that uh, 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 trying to raise uh, the new generation and uh, empower them against against Israel, which is not right. Uh, I think. I think. I think. I think that. Pardon. You are talking about the incitement issue that there always be. So, yes, inside, yes. But uh, so, uh, uh, so there is no incitement in our books. First of all, uh, you have to bear in mind that that these books are printed and uh, by help of the European Union. Do you think that the European Union will agree that any kind of incitement will be in these books? You know the answer. Of course not. Of course not. But if there is a map that appears in the books uh, uh, showing the history of Palestine, saying that in this map, this was a historical Palestine, so nothing, nothing, nothing kind, any kind of incitement in it. I just telling about the history of Palestine. And, and this is the right to say that it was Palestine, of course, and not Israel. But Israel, uh, since 1948, uh, have been established. Yes, yeah, I, mean. I, I want to add something yeah. here. In all Palestinian maps, they uh, uh, draw uh, uh, the green line. Uh, it means that all Palestinian single uh, student uh, knows that the uh, Palestinian state will be in West Bank and Gaza Strip. But I didn't see any map in Israel 
that the West Bank and Gaza Strip are in it. The, the uh, uh, draw Israel for the whole Palestinian history. In our maps, even if we speak about Palestine, historic Palestine, but we divide it to, to two states, West Bank and Gaza Strip alone, and Israel, the second party. So the, this, if, we, if we speak about the maps in Israel, there is nothing about Palestine. There is nothing about Palestinians. There is nothing about the West Bank. There is no single map in Israeli uh, school books. Uh, so uh, uh, the uh, West Bank and Gaza Strip in it. I just want to I just want to say that in the school book that I learned in. Uh, there was definitely the green line, and it doesn't say beyond the green line Palestinian state, but it says the Western, the West, uh, mm -hmm. the West Bank. Um, no, 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 not West Bank. Yehuda Bishomron. Yehuda no, and Sh no, it depends which no, book. Really? It depends which books. Ah, it which books. It there are books, yes. also an education system that okay. relate to the green line and uh, and do relate to to Palestinian history in, in one way or another, maybe not enough in your eyes, but there is, there is a, I just want to add that. Okay, there's another question here. Is there a vision for a confederation in the two-state solution with the state of Israel? Well, this is a new paradigm. If may I answer this, Riyadh? Yes, of course, man. You are, you're asking my permission to ask. I mean, you are the new negotiator. Come on, man. <laughs> this, this issue is a new paradigm that is taking place and people are thinking about it uh, uh, seriously. And uh, I think there is a, uh, uh, you know, a, a working plan was done by Israelis and it was shared by Palestinians as well. So they are thinking about it as a third option because if the failure of the two-state solution, if the failure of one-state solution, then they're talking about federation. But even federation or confederation has to be between two states. You have to recognize the state of Palestine. That is your problem. The recognition of a Palestinian state, it's a, 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 that's the dignity for the Palestinians. And then after that, any other solution, people are ready to talk about. Any relationship between Palestinians and Israelis, we are ready to talk about. But this is their dignity. And you have to recognize this. Denying our dignity, denying our freedom, will not help in accomplishing anything. Why you are living in a free country? Why you have free to do whatever you wanted to do? Within the limitation, of course. Why we are to stay under occupation forever? Why? Why your military are controlling our life? Why? That's a major question that you have to think about it and not to bring another excuses why there is incitement here and not incitement here. Of course, when I see the chair, I'm afraid about my children. I have to be concerned about my, my children, about their future. It's exactly like you. So please have an open mind, an open heart. Think about us in a different way that we think that we are enemy. We are ready to be the best. We are your best friends, by the way. We are the closest to you, by the way. But you cannot, you cannot, you cannot keep controlling our life. It's as simple as this. By the way, for the education, the incitement, there is a, a, a committee between Americans as well as the Israelis and Palestinians. Committee are reviewing all those documents here and there. And nobody is talking about this incitement anymore. So, Take that part of narrative because it's an obstacle toward being positive and start to think positively about the things that you can do. It's not us. It's there is something from your side in order to show me the good faith that you are going to lead us to establish our dignity in a way. And therefore, you will see we are open hand. I mean, the first slide that uh, 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 Ziad put forward for you and this, the two hands getting together, they have to be, you know, uh, uh, closed with each other. That's the whole issue. Leora, okay. uh, Leora I have one question that was sent just to me, so allow right. me to read it, yeah. okay? 
A uh, question to the Palestinian presenters. Why don't you learn from Anwar Sadat? Uh, what if Abu Mazen publicly declared that he wanted to make a speech at the Knesset about the Palestinians' agreement to abandon any terrorist armed activity and recognizing the state of Israel for peace? In return, he would ask for return to the 67 border uh, borders with negotiated land exchanges. Of course, yeah. uh, I want to read that before, before I know you will answer this, but I want to tell you something. If a Muslim went to the Knesset and make a speech over there, the reply from Netanyahu will be to build another 2,000 units in the settlement. Because he did it to Biden, he did it to, to, to uh, 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 Obama as well. So give us something that we can get out of that, and we will ask Abu Mazen to go to the Knesset. Tell us, he said that when he went there, he knew what he's getting back from the Israelis, because there were a previous negotiation between the two, and they were agreed if he goes there, then this is what he will get. Tell us what we can get from you, and we will ask Abu Mazen to go tomorrow to the Knesset. Um, okay, I think that uh, President Mahmoud Abbas uh, did more than Sadat visit to Knesset. We recognized Israel, the, the right of existence. We uh, recognized two-state solution. We uh, were very uh, moderate in all issues. We, we have a huge consciousness in, in all issues. What should we do? It is not a matter of breaking the, the ice as the, by a visit. There is a, a direct negotiation. There were direct negotiations between the two sides. President Mahmoud Abbas sit with Benjamin Netanyahu many times and sit with all Israeli prime ministers. There is nothing to, to break here by visiting Knesset, without having something in his hand, President Mahmoud Abbas, uh, his visit to Knesset will be a catastrophic uh, uh, result in the public opinion. We met all Israeli prime ministers, including Benjamin Netanyahu. The last uh, round of negotiation uh, was about eight months intensive negotiations between President Mahmoud Abbas and Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, led by, led by uh, uh, Secretary of State John Kerry, and nothing came out of this negotiation. So, so nothing can be done with uh, this visit to Knesset, even with uh, talking to Benjamin Netanyahu, even to start a new round of negotiations we were in all these places and nothing uh, came out. Okay, so I wanna, I wanna continue to a question of Naftali. Um, Just one thing, uh, because of that, you know, related. You know, Abu Mazen went to the funeral of uh, Shimon Peres and your prime minister, he did not even recognize him when he was there. He did not even mention his name. And he was in the funeral, paid bay respect to Shimon Peres, the man who made peace with him. And he, your prime minister, did not even recognize his name as one of the attendants for that. Okay. Yeah, what's your next question? Okay. Uh, there's a question. Um, what joint plans already exist put together by Palestinians and Israelis together to move forward? Instead of each side saying what has to be. There are side. many. There are many uh, documents that were uh, published and in the doing. So right now, right now, these days, you know, there is a new, I can see maybe my colleagues um, are not uh, participating on this uh, in one way or another, but I can tell you something about liberalization, uh, the Arab Peace Initiative in support of Israeli-Palestinian negotiations. And this is the working between Palestinians Israeli, Egyptian, Jordanian, as well as Saudis and Emirates. That's a new thing, you see, that they would be discussing this. 
There is another issue within the Jordanian, Egyptian, Israeli, Palestinian alone also are talking about issues related how to move ahead with break the ice between the Palestinian and the Israeli. The, uh, the private sector in Israel and the private sector in Palestine under the auspices of the uh, uh, World Economic Forum also are dealing with each other in order to find a way through economy and how to break the ice and uh, trying to find a solution, political solution for that. The NGOs in Israel, like INSS, like CIP, like ECF, are dealing with NGOs in Palestine as well. Also, all those are working together there, but there is nobody is listening from your government to those voices, unfortunately. Well, thank you, thank you, uh, dear Samih, uh, uh, mentioning uh, this organization. But you forgot your your own organization, our organization, <laughs> the PCIIS. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, we have been working eight eight years to contact yeah. to contact uh, 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 people in in Israel, people, organizations, individuals, you name it, and and lecturing yeah. here and there in universities, myself and my. My colleague Ashraf as well, and uh, yeah. and welcoming uh, Israelis. We welcomed uh, Leora. You came to visit us in Ramallah, and uh, and uh, it was was uh, very very precious and and great to come to us. And again, we, we extend uh, another invitation for you and your colleagues to come and visit us, in spite of the fact that you are a settler. Okay. <laughs> the, other thing, the other thing I want to tell you, uh, because you are trying here to talk about the narratives between the two, the Geneva Initiative in Palestine and in Israel were ahead of you because we dealt with that and we came with something called dealing with the past. It was a very interesting document, stay to be published. They talked about the narratives, they talk about justice, they talk about what happened in both sides, and we were ahead of all others thinking to find a solution for the narratives and how to overcome this problem, because it's a major problem by understanding each other. This is a very well document uh, there. It's not uh, published yet, but we would like very much for us in any negotiation, if that started the negotiation, to be within the table number one. The first paper to be put in the negotiation. So in order to reduce the tension of the narratives that is being uh, now, uh, uh, you know, uh, history. Okay, we have, we have dealt with all the issues. Okay. Um, well, I think as a continuation to that answer, there is a question from Nareev, um, who writes, I wonder if you think Israelis and Palestinians are ready for peace taking into consideration the deep lack of trust, the fear, and the pain. The people, you know the trust? The people, not, yeah, the, the, uh, not the politic politicians. You know, this is also misleading. Why? In Oslo, when Oslo started, it did not start between people to people. It was started between the leadership. Yeah, that was part of the problem. Pardon? <laughs> Sorry. I said that was probably the part, part of the problem with the Oslo agreement. But anyway, go on. Okay, but if no, the leadership, the leadership can can lead. Leadership can lead the people in order to break the trust, the untrust between the two. You really think it can only work um, it can only work top down if there's no need for bottom up? No, no, no. It has to be both, of course. Top down and bottom up should work together, but the initiative should come from the from both. I mean, but the, you see, unfortunately, those uh, uh, bottom up uh, uh, paradigm is not working when you have too many spoilers in both sides that are dealing badly with this. You have not only we have spoilers in our part, but we have spoilers in your part as well. And the leaders of different or, uh, organizations in Israel, different parties in Israel, are not only they don't want to see Palestinians, they want to throw us to Jordan there, okay? So 
we have a difficult for this. But if it can, it, if it can couple between the top down and bottom up, I am sure that we can reach an agreement there. The leadership are not moving, and you know that. You don't have to explain that to you because you know it. They, they, they don't want to talk about it at all. Even with the one thing that we did not accept, which is the Trump plan. Mr. Netanyahu went to the settlers and said, yeah, I mean, you know, if the, if the Palestinians want to call it uh, a state, their own state, we will call it something else. Oh, okay. So he had no intention. The right wing in Israel is leading. And you have four elections. Uh, God knows maybe you will have the fifth election as well. So it's your society, there is something wrong with that and you have to recognize this and you have to start to work in your own society. There is a lot of difference between your mosaic and your society as well. So don't put the blame on us, say Hamas and, and Fatah and uh, here and there. You have the same problems there. So oh, the, question, the question was about Israelis and Palestinians. Each huh? side taking response. The question was about Israelis and Palestinians both sides taking responsibility for what's going on. Yes, but uh, you, you cannot compare it equally uh, since one is uh, overriding the other, uh, issue the military, occupying, uh, controlling the life. I can, you, know, you're, uh, you know some examples about some of the settlements, they're taking water more than any of the government in, in, uh, in Palestine. You know that. They're, they're moving toward lands, uh, uh, confiscated lands, uh, you name it. I mean, you know that. <laughs> you can explain that to your own uh, group there, tell them exactly what is happening there. Because this telling them the truth, that makes the trust between us uh, uh, much better. Yeah. Ziad, you want to? Well, I, I, I want to add something, if, if my friend Samih allow me. Um, I think, I think at, uh, at the end of the day, this is the benefit of Israelis, cit Israeli citizens before Palestinians. And why is that? Because any time that we talk with Israelis, they always raise the question of security. My friends, I will tell you that Israel is very strong. Israel knows very well how to protect uh, themselves and their, their citizens. And, and uh, they don't need to raise this question again. I mean, who need this security is Palestinians. On the contrary, the Palestinians need security. The, the Palestinians need somebody to protect them from occupation, from soldiers, from settlers, I mean, uh, Leora, bad settlers, not you, okay? So, uh, uh, I'm not the only one, you know. Huh? I'm not the only one, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm I'm looking at the, uh, no, Leora, no. where? The settlement. What? Where do you live? Where, which settlement do you uh, live in? In Al Zahab. Where? Al Zahab. It's you are not, Samir, you are not invited to visit her. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> anyhow, near anyhow. Near anyhow. Near I, I, will, I will continue with permission. Yeah. At the end of the day, what we need, uh, 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 Palestinians, we need to finish with the occupation and establish our independent state on our soil, in our land, and ha on, on the border of 67 having East Jerusalem, East Jerusalem, our capital. So this is our needs. This is what we want, okay? And this is on the sake of both people, Palestinians as well as Israelis. And I think, Sefi, we have to finish because not only we are tired, I think uh, our, our guests as well, even that we have a lot to, to say and to answer questions. Um, what do you think, Leora? I would, say, I would say one more question here that I think is also important, if okay. that's okay, Ziad. And, uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, I mean, there are a lot more questions, but um, there's a question by Dr. Iyad Al-Bajani. Why do Israelis 
why do Israelis keep calling the West Bank Judea and Samaria and not recognize Palestinian territory? Do you want to answer that or should I answer that? <laughs> <laughs> From your point of view, of course. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't make up those names, Judea and Samaria. <laughs> yes, we had. Yeah, okay. Judea and Samaria, of course, it's a, it's a, it's a historical name and, and given to, to this uh, 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 land, okay, uh, but it's a Palestinian land. If we return back to history, we can go to the Canaanites and then name it as, as, as the name of the Canaanites. No, we don't want to deal with this. I don't know. Uh, I think, uh, uh, Dr. Dajani, if Israel withdrew from the occupied territories, then it will be raised and named as Palestine and not West Bank or Gaza Strip. It's Palestine, the state of Palestine. Inshallah, we will call it soon. Okay. Uh, Whereas she's laughing, she doesn't believe in this, it seems like. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, we're ready to answer all of your questions because that's the way of uh, uh, understanding each other, that we need to talk frankly to each other and uh, to uh, to show whether the, the, the good thing and the bad thing, which is very interesting for both society of us, that we have to understand each other in order to find a solution, in order to agree on the solution. But the, the issue of uh, 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 one, one thing that is bothering us here, that uh, all the people and some of the NGOs that will in Israel, they're talking about conflict management. And it seems like your leadership are fine with that, you know. We want a conflict resolution. We want a, to resolve this conflict because it is harming both of us. And when we, I, we, that we, I agree with you. That I agree with you completely. Pardon? I said, on that, I agree with you completely. On, on that point that you just said. Lala, I, I, I don't understand because my voice is not... Leora agrees with you completely. Thank you. Agrees with you. Okay. Thank you, Leora. Next time you're in the Mala, please let me know so I can meet you with the ad. No problem. <laughs> I just okay. want to add that the issue of names, of how you call a place, is, uh, is um, it goes deeper than just um, the name. And, um, and Judea and Samaria, it's symbolic. Uh, this is the whole symbolic story. If it's Judea and Samaria, or it's Palestine, or it's, and it goes back to the question of uh, who calls this place home, and why do people call this place home, and why do Jews come to live here and feel like they're coming home, not not occupying someone else, and why do Palestinians feel that this is their home and they're being occupied? And um, I agree, it's very complicated. But I think until we don't realize each side feels that this is their home, including Judea and Samaria, okay, some Jews feel like that is much more Israel than Tel Aviv or Haifa, if you look at Jewish history. That, that's so, great. Well, you know what? That, that, that's great, Leora. You know what? That's great. We are ready. We are ready. If you have nothing to do in Haifa or Tel Aviv or, or, or Akko, then please come to the West Bank and we will go there. Yeah, let's speak. <laughs> that was lovely. That was great. Listen, I, I just want to, to quote uh, something that Barbara wrote. Uh, we need to start by understanding each other's trauma, and then we need to figure out how to move forward in goodwill, in the interest of the next seven generations, as our native population has taught us. So I don't but, expect it. Uh, uh, you know what? you agree with yeah. the idea of understanding each other. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Sefi, in this occasion, let me, let me extend my, my best regards to a good friend, uh, uh, Dr. Barbara Landau from Canada, uh, and, uh, and uh, her actions in J-Link organization. You are great, Barbara. Keep on working, and we will keep on cooperating. All right, Leo, I think we are over. Am I correct? 
I think, yeah. I just want to say thank you from also from J Space Canada. Karen Mock, who is the uh, head of J Space Canada, is also took the time. We have two other competing wonderful webinars, but we chose you. And we chose you with a good reason because this is a very important conversation. So I want to I want to make that connection because J Space Canada is working with J Link in order to have some kind of hopeful future. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Barbara. So I think uh, I think that's the time to say thank you very much to all our uh, uh, distinguished guests. It was very interesting and challenging. And we've only just begun. There is still quite a way to go, and we should meet soon in Ramallah, hopefully soon. I promised to come, and you invited me last time. It was in Hebrew. I believe you are not changing your mind now. So, <laughs> no, not at all. Yeah. Not, at, <laughs> not at all. You are also most welcome. <laughs> so I, I, yeah, I'm please, definitely. Please we need for us. We will come. You bring some vaccines for us. Pfizer vaccine for us as well. Bring something to us. I haven't taken my shot till now. I'm waiting. Wow. Wow. Thank you. So thank you. I think that's time to say thank you very much to all of you, to all the people who stayed with us for almost two and a half hours. And of course, uh, Ziyad and Samih and, uh, and Ashraf. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Thank you. thank you for attending thank with you us. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Take care. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank Take you. Care. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's, that's shalom, shalom. Bye bye. Some Californians. I tend to buy Italian ones.